Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This does not look like a ham radio, I know that. But, sometimes in ham radio we do a lot of do-it-yourself stuff, and sometimes you need the right tools, so we're going to talk a little bit about some electrical troubleshooting today, and we're going to talk about a multimeter that I find super handy. Let's take a look. This floodlight is on the back of our house, and it's actually at ground level where I'm standing. Kind of low, but if you could see behind the camera here, the ground slopes off and goes downhill, so it's not too bad a location. This hasn't worked since we moved into this house, and I'm not even quite sure which switch turns this on. There is a switch uh, in our rec room downstairs that doesn't seem to go to anything else, so I'm pretty sure it's this light, but I'm not positive. The other thing that I'm not positive of is I don't know if it's on or off right now, and I don't know what breaker turns it on or off. So I'm going to have to be really careful because these could be live, and I'm also going to try to figure out which switch controls it at the same time. Sometimes when you're doing this, you need a couple of people or a couple of hands. Because what I really need to do is I'm going to put my multimeter on volts, and I'm going to use a couple of insulated clip leads to connect up to this. But I really want to be able to see what the reading is when I go downstairs to turn the light switch on and off and see if I'm actually getting power to go on and off to this. This meter is a Fluke, it's a 3000 FC. FC stands for Fluke Connect. So the really cool thing about this meter is it's got a Bluetooth connection built in, and then there is a handy Fluke Connect app that goes on your phone that allows me to see exactly what's on the meter from up to 30 or 40, I've eh, probably about 40 feet away is about the most you'll get, depending on whether you're going through walls and such. So let's take a look at how we hook this up and how we can troubleshoot this and find out what switch turns this on and if it's in fact on right now. All right, hopefully you can see the meter face okay. There's a little bit of a glare here. And we've got the app up and running for Flute Connect. And I'm going to say connect and capture measurements, and it's looking for Fluke Connect tools, so we're going to press the connect button, and I want to pair with the app, so I'm going to say select, and now on the app here I see the meter, so I'm going to touch connect, and now I am seeing exactly what is on the meter face. So we can wander around and see what our meter is seeing. So let's connect up our leads and go see if we can figure out whether the first whether the light's on or not, and then what switch controls it. All right, in general, I'm going to tell you what I'm about to do is a, not a real good idea. You should not work on any kind of house wiring or electrical wiring live. The problem is, in my case, I don't know if this is live or not, and I have no idea what circuit breaker may or may not control this. So I've got insulated clip leads installed on my meter here so that I can very carefully take off this wire nut and I'm not going to touch that wire at all. And I'm going to put an insulated clip lead on that one. And then I am going to very carefully take off this other wire nut And I'm going to make sure that I am only touching anything anywhere near here with one hand at a time. And of course, this wire nut is coming off with great difficulty. This has probably been out here exposed to the weather for a long time. There we go. All right. That wire nut's off. And again, being very careful to stay away from the wires with my fingers, we're going to put the insulated lead on there. And now if we go back to our app, and if we look on the meter, 
we can see that the meter is showing 17.8 volts AC and that is what I'm seeing on the meter face over here. I'm not going to turn the camera around. That in fact is off. There is often what's called capacitive stray voltage on electrical wiring in the house because these are running next to other wires all through the house that have voltage in them. So when you have a very high impedance meter, which all modern digital multimeters are, they'll pick up stray voltage that gets in basically capacitively coupled into the wires. Just like we capacitively couple antennas sometimes. All right, let's go inside and see if we can find out if the switch for this is the one I think it is. All right, I'm in the house and there is a light switch here in the corner of this room that has never worked anything. So we're going to see if this is the light switch for those lights outside. Hey, look at that, 120 volts. And if I flip it off, we're back down to the 17. So this is definitely the light switch and it is now definitely in the off position. So really handy because I don't have to run back and forth or if you don't have anybody else around the house that you can have flip the switch and yell while you were outside with the meter. This app is really handy. So we're going to leave that off. Okay, one last final test. I'm inside here at the switch. I didn't bother showing you the whole process of installing the light fixtures, but let's see if this works. Hey, I think we're in business. We finally have a light that works out here. Well, there you have it. Uh, first, let me apologize for some of the video shots that were maybe a little too close or a little cut off, but I was trying to hurry outside and get some of those shots while I still had daylight, so I was probably not quite as careful as I should have been setting up the shots. And I apologize that I didn't show you the details of wiring up the new light. However, this is not the home wiring channel, so I figured that would probably be okay with most of you. I just wanted to show you some of the things you can do with uh, a meter that has Bluetooth capability. Um, this is mine. This is not a sponsored video. I've had this meter for several years. This is a Fluke 3000 FC. There is a link in the description if you're interested in getting one. And actually, I just checked to see if the link was still valid. And as I'm recording this, which is the middle of September 2024, Amazon actually has a sale on this right now. So, and it is an affiliate link, fair warning, but that doesn't change your price on it or anything. It just gives me a little bit of a cut to help feed the channel and fund the channel for doing stuff like this. Um, you can certainly find Bluetooth meters that are less expensive out there. Fluke is kind of the gold standard. I use meters like this, and in fact, this exact one for my day job where I work with some high voltage stuff. And I do want to just say something really quickly about that. If you work with anything where you're dealing with high voltage, like maybe a tube kilowatt amplifier or something where there might be 500, 800, 1000 volts inside the amplifier, always make sure, whether it's a Fluke or any brand, that you have a meter that is properly rated for the voltage that you're using. And I'm going to hold this up and hopefully you can see this or I'll get a, a zoomed in shot. Make sure on the meter it has the voltage and category ratings. The voltage rating is the most important for working on high voltage. You want a meter that's rated at least for the voltages you're going to be using. The category rating is a surge rating. So like if you're working on like grid power stuff, if there could be a voltage surge higher than that, the higher the category number, the more, um, the more survivable the meter is for surges that may happen without like blowing up and injuring you. But this meter is a category 3000 volt, category 4 600 volt. So I know I can take voltage readings at least up to a thousand volts with this safely without worrying about the meter blowing up in my face. And as I said, if you're working on a kilowatt amp or even just a tube, an older tube, uh, 100 watt transceiver, there can be, you know, four, five, six hundred volts in there on some parts on the tubes. So you want to make sure you have a properly rated meter. Uh, and these are the, the little insulated alligator clips came with this. So anyway, 
there's some troubleshooting you can do with a Bluetooth meter where you can go read things remotely. As I said, you can find them cheaper than this and some of them are fine. Make sure that you get one with a voltage rating suitable for what you're doing and probably for most of you, you're going to be working on 12 volt, 24 volt stuff and you'll be fine with any of them. But if you work on high voltage stuff, get the right meter. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.